guys, and welcome to another episode of Haunt Talk. In today's episode, we are going to be reviewing Lake Erie Fear Fest in Sandusky, Ohio. Um, if you are tired of waiting in line for two hours for a mediocre haunted house at Cedar Point, <laughs> this is a place to go. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, yeah, because we did try to go back to Cedar Point this night, and it's just been abysmal this year. Oof. We would have, we wanted to do a review on Cedar Point, like an actual. We did a couple of vlogs, but we only got to go through what two of the haunted houses. Yes, we did get to go through all the scare zones, um, because we didn't get to you last time. Blood in the Bayou, we did actually. Um, it was pretty good. Had to walk like forever to get back there, but <laughs> we basically gave up on it. We're like, we're not waiting this long for haunted houses here. Um, we we plan on going to uh, Lake Erie Fear Fest. Uh, anyways, which is at the same place that Ghostly Manor is, which we did go to Ghostly Manor last year and really liked it, but they didn't open up the other haunts. Now, usually there's, oh, I think there's like four or five haunted houses in a trail. It was usually yeah. five haunted houses in a trail. This year, they just had three of the haunted houses open, mm-hmm. but they didn't have the other two or the trail open this year. Hopefully, they get back to that next year. So basically, um, Ghostly Manor is, it's, well... <clears throat> It's like a skating rink slash arcade slash year-round haunted house. Yeah, like one of those like family fun places where you can do pretty much a little of everything. Right. Yeah, I think there's a bowling alley in there, possibly. You know, there, there's a bunch so, of stuff yeah. in there. There's a bunch of stuff in there. Now, Ghostly Manor, like I said, the actual Ghostly Manor haunted house is inside of that place, but the others are outside in like at least semi-permanent structures. Mm-hmm. Is, you know, kind of what the deal is there. And again, it's really close to um, Cedar Point because it is in Sandusky as well. Now, before we get to the review, I just want to say, uh, you know, <clears throat> we're nearing the end of haunt season now. You know, by the time you're watching this, you know, it'll be the, it'll be the week before Halloween weekend. And, you know, these videos obviously will end until next year, but we do other stuff. We have people say, you know, oh, you know, that's the, the content's going to be done soon. It's like, but remember, we do other stuff like, creep, like Creeps, Creatures, and Haunts. Oh, my. And that's our podcast, but it is also on YouTube, similar form. Where we sit there and we talk about real-life spooky things. Sometimes we talk about our ghost hunts because we have another series called Haunted Adventures where we film those ghost hunts. But that podcast series, you know, is we sometimes we'll just tell creepy stories. Sometimes we'll interview people. Sometimes we do talk about the haunt industry and interview people from there as well. So that's why we call it Creeps, Creatures, and Haunts, because it covers all three of those things. So make sure that just because it's not haunt season, you didn't, like, go away from the channel and assume there's not going to be anything uploaded, because we'll be doing a bunch of other stuff. It just won't all be directly haunted house related. We also sometimes eat food stuff. No one really watches that, so we might be moving more away from that kind of thing. But, you know... If there's something you would like us to do, some kind of content in particular you would like us to do, let us know. We're open for suggestions. But that being said, we will get into the review, which means it's time to refer to the Book of the Dead. Book of the Dead. Book of the Dead. Book of the Dead. All right. So, of course, we're starting off with sets and props. Um, so you get in line and uh, everybody had ponchos on. Yeah. And we're like, why does everybody have ponchos on? Well, apparently, there's a big sign at the entrance of the thing that says, you may get wet, ponchos provided. So they give you free ponchos, which is nice. Right, and this was for the first of the, because you go, yes. you have to go in an order. You can't choose, at least yeah. not this year. Um, what was this one called? It was called Dead in the Water. Dead in the Water, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so we're like, okay, how wet are we going to get? Well, I got fairly wet <laughs> because one of the guys just threw a bottle of water at me which was weird yeah but, <laughs> but there's, whatever but there's also like just pipes in the ceiling that would just yeah. pour water on you and, and stuff like that and it was like really misty i think as soon yeah. as you walk in you get sprayed with like mist yeah yeah so um obviously this is like a um maritime kind of themed right you actually are on a ship which i thought was really really cool it was really um, and i did look up in years past it was like a little ride you would take that ship that like we just okay. walked over yeah like the, the the beginning part of that before you got to like where the wheel and that is would actually move but that oh, okay i don't know if that's just not at all working this year or if it just wasn't working the night we were but mm. you just walked through it as a normal scene this okay. year at least um there were um Everything you could think of, water, 
ocean related. There were tentacles, mermaids, really cool, like glow in the dark jellyfish. Yeah. Um, I was afraid I was going to get shocked in there, so I did not touch the jellyfish. <laughs> I don't think we did, but um, it was really, really cool. I, I really, I really, yeah, I really liked those liked the tentacles. Theme. Those yeah, things were it really was a, cool. It was a really cool scene. There's another scene I think it was kind of like, like it was storming. Yes. That was cool. Yeah, it was lightning and everything, and that was really cool. And it was just very wet in there. It really yeah, did feel like did. you were like, it really gave you the feeling of like being on like a sinking ship or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, like in the middle of a storm. Yeah. and. Which I wish, I mean, I've seen that scene, that theme kind of before, but I really liked how they did it here. And I don't mm -hmm. know if I've seen it done in the detail. Yeah. Um, that this place did. Yeah, I definitely think the detail was a lot more there, and just there was like hanging fish, like they had got just caught like a bunch of fish, and kind of smelled a little bit like it, and it was just it was really well done. I really yeah, liked that. Yeah, it was that. really well done. Um, was short though, but yeah. After that, you head out into the next one, which is a blackout haunt, and it was called I don't remember. I don't remember it's like either. Dark, is it dark mare. Dark mare. Okay. Dark mare. Dark mare. Yeah. Now, yeah, this is just a blackout haunt, which, as you know, we're not a huge fan of. But as far as blackout haunts go, I did think this was pretty well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a few little surprises in there because this was the one that had the, um, the inflatable wall. Yeah, you're walking down a dark hallway, and all of a sudden, like it's kind of like a claustrophobia tunnel, but there's not on the not on the one side, so it just inflates and kind of pushes you up against the one wall. <laughs> So that was fun. Yeah. They do have, like, a few different rooms, like, with lasers, and, like, it's, like, impossible to see where you're going, so mm -hmm. you kind of have to feel around and the walls and stuff like that. But, again, not much talk about for sets and props in this one because we'll get more in this one in actors because, again, it's just a blackout haunt. So yeah. besides lasers in the wall, like, it's not really sets and props. That's the point. Right. But then it leads you directly into uh, the main attraction, uh, I would say, which is Ghostly Manor. Now, this one is kind of... Um, it sticks over, it sticks around like a haunted house theme, but yeah. it does dabble in other things. Like at one mm -hmm. point you do go through what looks like a giant like totem mouth and stuff like that. Yeah, it, it kind of has that old school haunted house theme where it kind of yeah. goes into a little bit of everything. Um, but it is mostly, yeah, Yeah, mostly house like, a, like you're in a haunted stuff. mansion yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, there were um, a lot of big like animatronics uh -huh. and props in here. Um, very well done done like you know very good distractions and stuff like that not like overly done where some people just you know put them there just to have them well, right and a cool thing is too it seems like a lot of these props are actually actor triggered not mm -hmm. necessarily sensor yeah. so the timing is generally better but you know, one of the first things when you walk into one of the it's one of the earlier rooms like the whole wall just drops and a giant animatronic <laughs> just comes flying out of it that was really cool i think you screamed <laughs> Probably. Um, <laughs> they have one that I know scared, scared me a lot. There's, like, a chandelier that, like, falls onto, like, a metal table that makes this, like, extremely loud mm -hmm. noise. Um, yeah. There was a monster under the table. The table actually lifted up, a and there was a monster out. inside the table. That was really cool. That was cool. Um, there was this thing in, there was, like, this kid's room, and it looked like a woman, like, hanging kind of like from the ceiling i don't know if she was supposed to be floating or what but she had like tentacles or i don't know if it was maybe entrails i don't know but it was like these things hanging off of her and they were like going into kids and things like that and they were going around the room and stuff which i thought was pretty cool it was pretty pretty creepy yeah um and then <clears throat> the horn I, i'm gonna read it from from here it says Horn that made my soul leave my body. That's what he wrote. Yeah. There's this. It's just like a, it's early, really early on. You're just walking down this black hallway, kind of like looking at the room and you're about like, you're kind of about to like go into the main part of the haunt. And there's just this horn that's in a corner somewhere that just blares from behind <laughs> you and just, just scared the crap out of us. Yeah. If you're not awake, you are now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was very, it's just the stupid little, you know, something like that. Loud noises are the easiest, mm -hmm. and it always pisses me off. And loud noises and air cannons. Air cannons. They're just the, the easiest ways to scare yeah. people. But this place is um, fairly, gener um, is fairly decorated. Ghostly Manor, uh, I think, I think the one I was most impressed with is actually the first one. I think yeah. Ghostly Manor has a lot of decorations and a lot of really cool props too, though. Mm -hmm. But I just really like the uniqueness of the first one. And again, the Blackout Haunt's a Blackout Haunt, but... 
Overall, though, everything was everything was pretty good as far as sets and props go, so we did give it a 9. All right, so that's moving on to actors. Um, there was actually quite a few. Usually we always have complaints mm-hmm. that there's not enough, and this one actually had quite a few. Yeah, and I will say, actually, I don't really know if there's that many of them, but the way they design the haunts, yeah. they are able to weave in and out, because, like, in Dark Mare... I think there was only three or four actually in the whole thing, but they were able to just weave in and out yeah. so well that um, it made it seem like there's a lot mm-hmm. more because they do they do a pretty good job of spacing you out as well. Yes. Yeah, because we never, I don't think we ever caught up to anybody. Someone caught up with us towards the end of the last one. And yeah. I don't know where they came from. They must have been running because like at no point did we ever see these people. Then all of a sudden they just caught up to us like at the <laughs> end and we're like, they must have got scared and just literally ran through parts yeah. of the last time. Yeah. But, of course, no one can control that. But, yeah, the actors were really good. They were very good at maneuvering the way around and really trying to scare you. Yeah. Props to the chainsaw guy that terrorized a child <laughs> to the point where she just screamed and screamed oh, that she gosh. wouldn't go into the first haunt to the, po- to the point where the parent just had to take her away. Mm-hmm. She just straight out refused to go in, I think, because of how much this guy freaked her out yeah and he even tried to like rectify it he took his mask off he knelt down next to her he turned the chainsaw off everything and she was like "Uh uh-uh no i'm not having it (laughs) it was kind of sad but yeah it's okay they just wasted their money but um (laughs) there was yeah and i do they had of course lasers they have a couple like different areas that were kind of like laser swamps but Mm -hmm. um i mean the one i mean it's nice to actually see a good one when the actor actually utilized it by actually popping up right in front of you yeah. and actually scaring you. And the way they had it set up was that the room, you couldn't tell how to get out Yeah. of the room. The way that it was set up, the room yes. was like completely black and like the uh, what they used as the entrances, it just totally like because you know when the laser hits the wall it leaves like a line and usually you can tell where the entrance is by the line being off well the line wasn't off and we're like in there and i'm like where do we go yeah, after the actor i think scares a couple times he like did go and like open the thing yeah. so we could like get yeah. out of there yeah it was funny um yeah and the blackout haunt um they were pretty good they would seemingly come out of nowhere i noticed mm-hmm. like i would just have someone like whispering my ear in my ear and like however they have it designed i'm sure there's just lots of like little holes they can come in and out of but i recognize like one of the guys towards the end i know was one of the people that we saw at the very beginning yeah um like i mean i know as soon as it was kind of cool too like most of these haunts soon as you walk in they just would like jump scare you like yes actually you're walking up to the ticket booth, I haven't even paid yet, and someone comes around a corner and scared the crap out of me. Yeah, and then as soon as we were going into Dead in the Water, he scared you again. See, there's, two, had... of, there's two of them actually in Dead in the Water. That guy, and then there's someone else. Yeah, yeah, he, like, actually, the same guy that got him before we even bought our tickets snuck into Dead in the Water, and he got him again. I thought that was pretty funny. I was like, that's the same guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. It was cool. And they, they were pretty good at double scaring. One of the yes. one of the cooler scares uh, that happened throughout the night is we were walking to a claustrophobia tunnel. <laughs> and I had a guy that was stalking me. And I kind of like knew he was like behind me. I kept like looking over my shoulder because he was just kind of slowly creeping up on me. And then um, someone actually came out of the claustrophobia tunnel and scared Kim. Got and me. then as soon as he did that, that guy, because that guy started on me. Then this guy came up right behind me and like screeched in my ear. And then I jumped and it, yeah. <laughs> It was really good, really effective. Um, And that's something else they would do. They would activate a, like, you could tell if you, like, look closely enough that they would, like, hit a button that activates a prop. And then as this prop's coming, you're like, oh, my, then they'll, like, run up and be right mm -hmm. here, too. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I do wish there is a few more because even though there, like, there was a couple spots, particularly in the last, well, well, actually... And the first one, the first, like, half of the haunt was really good. Mm -hmm. But then, like, once, like, the squid room... It had, like, no one in it, and you could tell yeah. there's supposed to be. There's a couple rooms that, like, were cool. Like, the hammock room didn't have anybody in it, and it looked like it should have. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the same with Ghostly Manor. There is, uh, like, it's kind of, like, in the middle. It kind of, like, hit a dead spot. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then there was the, <laughs> that guy, um, when we were walking up to Ghostly Manor. Oh. The... <laughs> Oh, yeah. So we're walking. There's these weird hallways. Like when you get into this, the second haunt, when you leave, there's like this weird hallway that you have to go. It's like like, an outside hallway to get you from this haunt to the other one. And we're walking up and at the end of the hallway is a light that's beaming down and there's an actor there. And (laughs) 
like, I don't think he even saw us at first. <laughs> and he's just like. Which makes it better. It makes it even better. And he's just like doing this and just gyrating and just doing all this weird shit under this light and And we're just like and the closer you get uh, to him the more crazy he gets yeah to the point where we get close he like moves against the wall and he's just like his eyes roll back in his head and he's just like paying us no mind and i'm like okay and we're just like okay Okay. hi we're just gonna go in here bye yeah (laughs) it was really weird but it was really funny yeah he was cool he's like a voodoo looking yeah yeah Yeah. yeah. um so we did give Actors, 9.25. Because, mm-hmm. of course, you know, you could always use some more. <laughs> yeah. If it was just wasn't for a couple of those dead areas, yeah. But the ones that were there are super energetic and really good. Yes. And I'm hoping that they're able... And I'm, I'm wondering if that's why they maybe didn't open up the full haunt. Maybe they didn't have enough yeah. actors for it all. Because, like, I imagine if they would have had the full haunt with only that many actors, it would have really felt bad because, like, there would have been so much dead space. <laughs> there would have been, like, two at each time. Or right, yeah, because again, there just wasn't many, but it's just because they were able to transition that it made mm-hmm. mostly up for it. Um, so I really hope because I would like because like we liked all, all each of these haunts. Yes. So I'm really curious to see if the other ones are as good as quality as these. Yeah. ones. So moving right along to scare factor, <laughs> um, it is definitely feels a little bit more of like one of those old school type of haunts with just a lot of jump scares and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's. Like, there is good atmosphere, but it's more about, like, the old school, like, people, like, jumping out and going mm-hmm. boo at you. But there isn't a lot of, like, stalking in the houses themselves. No. Like, in the blackout haunt, a bit. And they do follow you a little bit, but, like, no one touches you or anything. It's more about them jumping out and getting good jump scares yeah. out of you. Yeah. Um, And, like, refinding different hiding places and stuff. Um, like and like we said, they, they have a good use of animatronics. Um, and then actually some of the animatronics, even the ones that I don't think were activated by actors, actually got me. Yeah, yeah. Like they're just placed so well and the animatronics are hidden so well mm-hmm. that when they like just randomly pop out of something, it does yeah, startle you. because they had some in like in drop windows and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And the drop window would go and you thought it was going to be an actor and it was actually an animatronic that just like comes out of it. Yeah. And it just, it, it gets you every time. There, yep. Not a lot of gore at this one. There is, like, the only two real scenes I remember that were gory is they have a body bag scene, and there is one where you have to push away through, like, pig carcasses and, like, yeah. a, in a kitchen scene. Um, but everything else was more, like, spoopy-themed. Yeah. And, like I said, the ship one monsters. was very a ship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you don't like fish, you might not like walking through fish, but that's Right. It. But, I mean, like, you know, should... How was this for someone that's younger? Um... I mean, there, that girl that ran away, but then there was like a five. There's a five year old that <laughs> seemed to make it through okay. So it just really depends. Like, like I said, the atmosphere. Like this is a fun one. It's kind of like Ghoul Brothers or something like that, where it's mm-hmm. scary, but it's not like that foreboding, like adult atmosphere, like something like the Haunted Hoochie or like Chippewa Lake Slaughterhouse yeah. or something yeah. like that, where they're like a different type of intensity. We did still give it a nine though, because of the amount of jump scares and all of that. Though, like this is definitely one that. I would definitely take with caution if you're going to take someone younger to this um, yeah. to this haunt. And if you are looking for something with a lot of jump scares to really, like, get your scream on, this one is a pretty good one. Yes. All right. So that brings us to value. It's $25 for the three haunted houses. I think it's $25... When all of the houses are open, I'm not absolutely sure on that. I'm not sure either. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it said thirty five dollars for VIP, which is fast pass, of course. Um, it took us about four minutes to get in, uh, get through Dead in the Water. Six minutes for Dark Mare, which was the blackout haunt, and about six minutes for Ghostly Manor. Mm-hmm. So I mean, and Dark Mare could take you longer because yeah. it's kind. Parts of it are kind of a maze, kind yeah. of. Yeah. So keep that in mind that that one could take you a little bit longer or a little bit shorter if you really find your way out quick. But Yeah, so think about like, you know, maybe 15 to 20 minutes Yeah. for the whole thing. Um, we did give it an 8 because mm-hmm. of that. Yeah, it's decent value. I just wish the haunts were a little bit longer. Um, you know, if the whole thing was open and it was uh, only, if it's, I don't know, again, if it's 25 with the whole thing, then definitely the value would be up. But still, it's still decent value because the haunts are, um, pretty good, even though they're short. Yeah. And then that brings us to overall, and we gave Ghostly Manor, or, I'm sorry, Lake Erie Fairfest, yeah. a nine. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, absolutely. We were excited that we actually got to go this year and that they did at least a couple of the other haunts because we really enjoyed. And I do think we enjoyed Ghostly Manor in and of itself better last year, just that haunt. But they yeah. also just had, that was the only one that was open. So it was crazy. Act, like the actors that were in there were really just everywhere. Oh, yeah, they were everywhere. Um, but with this one, since they're spread a little more thin. But, you know, overall, I really did enjoy the experience. Um, I highly recommend if you're, go, if you're there for Cedar Point um, to try and make the trip there if especially if you're finding that the haunts at cedar point really aren't scaring you as much as you would like to be yeah and even in the off season if you if yeah. you're getting that itch to go to a haunted house this one's open year round it is open year round it's a nice one to go Check to it out i've went there one time in the off season but this was years ago and they only had one actor working it but like the way they weave in and out with the props and stuff they still did a decent job yeah. because again i don't think they have enough capital and like resources to be paying like a full set of actors all the time <laughs> you know seven days a week right you know so but it is a good it's nice that that we actually have that option um of something because there's not many year rounds and i wish there were but yeah but that being said thank you very much for watching this video leave us a comment um a lot of you had commented because of the giveaway we were doing, and, you know, that is over now. But we do appreciate actually hearing from you. Yes. It's amazing how many people that, you know, the giveaway brought out. So, you know, comment our videos. It helps the algorithm. It's just going to be little things like that help us. If you like our stuff, uh, make sure to check out our Patreon. We have different tiers. We have a video on that, and the link for that is always in the description of every video. Same with our social media, so make sure you um, follow us on that. Um, Facebook and all that because we post anytime we like upload a video makes it a little bit easier because sometimes YouTube like doesn't show people the videos that are uploaded and also of course make sure to like and subscribe and click the bell notification so that you don't miss any videos and YouTube actually does send you the notifications when we upload thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next video bye